Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe that the world revolves around them and that nobody matters. And in today's episode, guys, another crazy Karen trespasses to steal from OP and threatens to call 911 when she's attacked. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And as always, you can send or link your stories to this email right here. Oh, and don't shake your heads too hard. So I'm a 23 year old male and I was on a trip with my family, all the cousins from my mom's side. We were about 15 people and this all happened when we were visiting the Buckingham Palace. Now everyone in my family knew to respect the Queen's guards and to not get in their way while they're marching. Everybody except my cousin who's an 18 year old female. She's pretty entitled and spoiled. When she saw the guards yelling for people to move out of their way and them not stopping when someone was in their way, she starts complaining to us. We tried explaining to her that it's just the Queen's Guards protocol and they're not allowed to stop for anyone. As entitled as she is, she wouldn't listen to any of us and she kept ranting. All of us in the family have gotten pretty much used to tuning her out when she's acting entitled though. Honestly, the whole family felt ashamed and embarrassed because of her. The whole family was walking around and taking pictures and that's when my cousin started mocking the Queen's Guards for their appearance and how they were dressed. Hearing her say all this, it really angered me because she was insulting soldiers, and it amazes me how she has no respect for someone who would defend their country. I wanted to say something, but I know she would just cause a scene. So as we're talking and having a fun time, the Queen's guards were marching or patrolling. They told us to move, which we did. My cousin, on the other hand, she stayed right in their way. She was at the edge of the width of the marching path, and she got hit with one of their shoulders, and she fell. My one cousin who was recording quickly cut the recording and had to help us restrain our entitled cousin from doing anything. My cousin later demands that we confront the guard for knocking her over, or at least report them to the police for assaulting her. Hearing her say that, I couldn't hold my laughter in. We all told her no, that's what you get for being in the guard's way, and everyone knows this. She didn't talk to us for the rest of the trip because we didn't take her side, because we disagreed and refused to call cops for assault. After we all came home from a 9 hour plane ride of her constantly bickering about how no one defended her, she started sending a lot of angry text messages and she called every single one of us names and said how we're spineless for not defending her and how we're the bad guys and not her. After a while, we thought the issue was dealt with and we started sharing videos and photos of our trip on the family group chat. And that's when my cousin saw the video of her getting shoved and she went ballistic. She was angry, trying to get us to delete the video. She then went on about how we should have helped her and that the Queen's Guard assaulted her. And that wasn't fair. So yeah, the post ends right there guys. And I just want to say that I love watching compilations of people getting mowed over by the Queen's Guards. It's actually pretty satisfying. Especially when they refuse to move over a selfie. And for all who don't know, it's not like they come at you with no warning either. If you're in the way, they will literally scream make way for the Queen's Guards multiple times. And guys, I find it funny how she's mad at the cousins for not doing anything. <laughs> like, what are they gonna do? Fight the guard and potentially get in trouble in a country that they're tourists in? Great idea. So my fiancé has three kids from his former marriage, while I have two from my former marriage as well. I quit my job to start focusing on getting my degree, and he's become the breadwinner, if you will, although I still contribute with my savings. I also do 80% of childcare and the chores. So long story short, he wanted me and my kids to attend Thanksgiving with his family, who are located across the country, and we were supposed to go yesterday. He booked our tickets and everything, but later before the flight, I found out that he, his kids, and myself were put into first class, while my two kids, who are 14 and 10, were put in economy. Finding that out, I was stunned, and he acted like it was no big deal. He told us it's just a few hours and my kids could just hang out there for a little while. I asked him how he could think this was acceptable and that's when he got mad. He told me that he's the one paying for the tickets, so we go by his rules. Hearing him say that, I immediately turned around and took my kids and made my way out of the airport. He started following us screaming at me to go back, but I refused and I told him that I no longer felt like spending Thanksgiving with his folks after this. My youngest cried because she never flew without me. He went with all of his kids and me and the kids are at home. He's not stopped calling to try to berate me and he's even had his mom text me that I needed to get over myself and to stop teaching my kids to be so spoiled and so entitled. She said that the fact that I was willing to miss Thanksgiving with the family over something so trivial shows my real character, personality, and mindsets, or lack thereof. 
I haven't replied to this, but I do feel horrible. So am I the a-hole, and should I have just let it slide and just went, and was this entitled? In case I wasn't clear, me and the kids left our family and hometown so we could go celebrate with his family in his hometown. So in my personal opinion regarding this post, guys, I don't think it's entitled to feel like your kids deserve to be treated equally. And I know some people might argue that it's the husband's money that he paid, so she's entitled for wanting first-class tickets for her kids. Now, I don't think it's a money thing, and if it is, those five first-class tickets could definitely become seven economy tickets, guys. I feel like he feels that her kids don't deserve it because he bought mom a first class ticket. And that kind of says a lot about how he thinks about her kids. And what makes it worse is that he got his mom to text OP telling her that she needs to get over herself and to teach her kids to stop being spoiled and entitled. But OP does come back with an update and it says, I'm currently getting myself and the kids packed to stay with my mother. This has happened before in other instances, but I kept thinking to myself, this isn't right, but I've invested too much time and effort into the relationship, so maybe this shouldn't get in the way. I'd also try to minimize most situations where I find my kids being put last. Now he's probably bad-mouthing me to the whole family, and so is his mom. So the kids and I are leaving. He'll be coming back to an empty home, except that he'll find some company because I've left the engagement ring. I took it off and left it on the nightstand. Distance and some reevaluation is needed right now, so thank you all who reached out with helpful inputs and perspectives. You're right. My kids need to come first, and that's what I keep trying to do, and I hope I won't ever fail. Thank you so much for the support. So there you have it, guys. OP left the man. But let me know, did she do the right thing? Okay, so this is no joke, and it literally happened, and my cats are now locked inside. So to make a long story short, my cats were lead trained to stay in the backyard, so I can let them outside when they're energized. I check on them every 5 minutes, and they have stacked outdoor furniture that they love to hide in. One cat is very skittish around strangers, and she'll hide, while the other one will only bolt if he's wary or energized. I also want to say that both cats have an I'm tolerating you relationship. So when I looked outside to check on them, I was startled to see both of them in a corner together. And that's when I saw the kid and her mother cornering them. I was pretty pissed off and I rushed out and started yelling at them, scaring the mom and her kid pretty badly. Of course, when my cat saw the open door, they rushed to it. And that's when the mom tried to grab both of them. That's when my female cat lashed out and clawed her hand good making the woman yell and recoil, letting my cats escape inside. Meanwhile, the girl started crying because the pretty kitties got away, and she wanted a kitty now. It was at that point the woman starts yelling at me, that she was going to report me for assault, and that she was going to call the police because I have a crazy cat outside. While I yelled from my back door that I was already on the phone with 911 reporting her for trespassing and attempted cat theft. The woman screamed at me in a rage that I'll be thrown in jail because she was hurt on my property. Therefore, I'm responsible. She then grabbed her wailing kid and she stormed out of my yard. I had actually dialed 911 and the dispatcher heard the exchange. And he assured me that if the Karen did try to report me, it wouldn't work because she was in the wrong. About 10 minutes later, cops pulled up and I gave my statements, descriptions, and pointed which direction the two had fled. The cops wrote it all down, before one told me that I wasn't the first to call from this area. Apparently the woman had been attempting to lure out other pets that her kid wanted. The cops were just trying to figure out who she was, and the woman was getting more brazen as my yard was actually the first that she had trespassed into. My cats are now being locked indoors for the foreseeable future, and I've warned a few of my neighbors who I know have pets, just in case they didn't know. This entire situation is honestly just stupid, and stealing a pet from their loving family is a low all on its own. And to note, yes, my yard is fenced, but it's a 5 foot high wooden one, so she had to be staking out my yard. And given I tend to take baby boy on walks on his leash, oh dear, both cats are also microchipped. And yes, there's now a baseball bat by my back door, but the cats are staying inside still. Better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, so that post went from being pretty entitled to totally insane, guys. And you know what I never understand? How these people do illegal things like trespassing to steal a cat, but then try to turn it around like they're the victims when they get hurt. I'm glad OP called the police before she did, and hopefully that crazy woman is put behind bars one day. Okay, so the next post, guys, is written by one of the most entitled people ever, and the guy's completely clueless. So my girlfriend's parents are divorced, and her father passed away at the end of last year. She was his only child, so she inherited most of his assets, which was a lot, because her father was a wealthy, wealthy man, at least to my standards. 
So the problem started after she took care of all the formalities regarding the inheritance. We moved in together, which made me happy because we've been together for four years already. And at first, I thought the apartment we've moved in was the only one she inherited because we didn't speak much about her father's fortune. But it turned out that that was just one of the five apartments that she inherited. Now, I asked her why she would withhold this information from me, and she told me that she hasn't thought that this would be so important, and she decided to either sell or rent the rest of the apartments. Hearing her say that, it made me feel kind of uneasy. Like, if we're together for so long, and we've both decided to move in together, then shouldn't we both discuss and choose which apartment to move into? My girlfriend apologized, so I left it at that, but it didn't end there. I later learned that she also inherited a house that she sold without consulting me, She argued that she wanted to give the money to her mom so she could live comfortably. But I don't believe that anyone would just sell a freaking house to give money to someone else. That's pure BS. Another thing that's making me confused is how she doesn't want to share anything with me. Her father left her a car and lots of electronics, like a MacBook. And she just claimed it without even asking if I need a new laptop or something. Like, I'm not expecting her to not use her inheritance, but we've been together for four years, and she knows I need a laptop. It would be nice if she at least asked. I also thought that she would at least let me drive her new car, but she just started to brag about how it's her first car, etc. And the funny thing is, she's not even driving it, because she prefers to take a bus or walk to most places, and still won't let me drive the car. But the thing that gets me most is she wants to split bills evenly. Even though I know she has a lot more money now, and I'm pretty sure she wouldn't even need my share of payment. So I asked her about it, and she actually got kind of mad at me this time. She told me that we're not married or anything, and that I shouldn't expect her to give her whole inheritance to me, and I'm not owed anything. So yeah, just the usual over-emotional woman BS. I told her that I just feel left out, because she's deciding what to do with the apartments herself and that she's just claiming the car and the MacBook while I'm here too, with no regard for my feelings. She doesn't want to understand. And the funny thing is, she actually argued that this is exactly why she never told me about her father's wealth, as if I was some kind of gold digger or something. I feel like my girlfriend's being really selfish, and I feel it's harder and harder for me to commit when I know there's people out there who would be way more caring in a relationship than her. I was thinking about suggesting couple therapy because I love her and I don't want to break up, but she has to realize that she's not alone and that I should be involved in the decisions she's making. My goodness guys, (laughs) this guy is so clueless and he's super freaking entitled. And his girlfriend is so right, they're not married, they're only dating, so she doesn't owe him anything. Like, this man is so clueless that he blames the girlfriend getting mad and not wanting to give him things on over-emotional woman BS. Like, give me the car your dad left you. You don't even drive. Give me the MacBook your dad left you. I need a laptop. Why aren't you consulting me before selling off property that you inherited? And why should I pay rent when I know you have money? Like, holy cow, dude, give it a break. Like, that's not over-emotional woman BS, so he can totally cut the crap on that. That's anyone's reaction to someone coming in and trying to claim things that don't belong to them. And if you guys think that's bad, listen to the updates, because it does get worse. Because this guy goes on r slash am I the a-hole, and he posts this jam. He says, I'm thinking about reporting my girlfriend's mom for tax evasion. From what I understand, monetary gifts are considered income in certain cases. And I believe the exact amount of the gift is way above the taxable threshold, as it was money from my girlfriend's father's house, which was a lot. Now, I'm not sure what I'll do, but I know my mother-in-law. She believes that I'm after my girlfriend's money and inheritance, because I caught her telling my girlfriend that she thinks I'm not worthy, that I'm greedy, that I'm a gold digger. She's projecting her own wrongdoings on me. It's important to me because my girlfriend is naive and she believes she did the right thing and I don't think she did. So yeah, he made that post on r slash am I the a-hole and apparently everybody chewed him out for it saying that that post definitely made him a gold digger. And then he comes back and tries to defend himself with this comment. He says, My girlfriend pays the bigger portion of our bills. We moved into one of her father's apartments and since she has way more money than me now, we agreed not too long ago that she would pay for it. My girlfriend has some problems with being selfish with her inheritance. For example, how she kept in secret how much exactly her father left her and how she sold most of it already. In most cases, men who earn more and have more assets have no problem with their women living comfortably. So why does everyone want me to feel bad when I want the same things? We've been together for four years and she's got more money than me now way more. And it's only natural that she pays more. You can't bully me into believing otherwise. 
She's agreed to come with me to couples therapy because she's changed completely after inheriting her father's fortune. She actually became selfish. So hopefully with that, she'll realize that I'm doing the right thing. We started couple therapy a few months ago. Our relationship went through a rough patch, so we were both at fault, and we decided to work on it instead of calling it quits. Our therapist is a very renowned one, so I did have high hopes for this. The first two meetings actually went well, but then he started being weirdly invested in our relationship. After our first few meetings, I think two or three, he suggested that we both need separate therapy with different specialists to work on ourselves and not just focus on this relationship. I refused as I see no reason to go into therapy myself. But as I said, he grew overly interested, especially in my girlfriend's well-being because he brought it up every single time we went. I wanted to change therapists, but my girlfriend was really against the idea, to the point of being mad at me for even suggesting it, which I also found really weird. She eventually started her individual therapy per his suggestion. And it's been a month. She's going to see her therapist every week while we go to our therapist for a couple's counseling at least once a month. And I just want to say she's changed, guys, not in a good way. My girlfriend started to be more nitpicky, argumentative, accusatory even. She would pick a fight over something, then bring it up in our session and have our therapist agree with her. And then they both gang up on me. The most recent example is from a week ago when I finally had enough. We had a mutual agreement about our living situation. We split the bills unevenly, which means she pays more, since she has more money than me anyway. Now, it's never been a problem for her before, but suddenly after individual therapy, it became a problem. And our therapist is actually like, it's unfair on her, it's burdensome for her, etc. And they were both so against me, guys. So I told my girlfriend that we either change the therapist or I don't want to go. To which she replies that either we go to this therapist or we break up. Now, I think breaking up over my request is a huge overreaction, but she refuses to even have a normal discussion with me, saying things like an eye for an eye or ultimatum for an ultimatum, and I'm at a loss. Like, is there even a way to salvage this? I need help. Maybe someone has any idea on how to approach the issue without my girlfriend going into ultimatum mode. Because if she breaks up with me, I will become homeless since I'm not working currently and I can't afford rent for now. As I said, it's way more complicated, and I can move back to my parents' place, but they're not rich, so I'd probably need to drop out of university to work full-time until I save some money. My whole life is gonna crumble, not just our relationship. So yeah, that was the friggin' saga, guys, and are you shaking your heads at this post? Like, how the heck can this guy not see that he's being so entitled? Oh, my girlfriend and the therapist keeps ganging up on me and telling me things that I don't want to hear. Like, I don't want to pay equal rent. She has more money than me. And the biggest kicker, guys, is he's not even working. (laughs) And like it's amazing how he believes he's 100% in the right somehow when he 100% sounds like a gold digging idiot. Like the poor idiot never gained a single ounce of self-awareness through any of those therapy sessions. So this takes place in late 2001, early 2002, so I'm a little fuzzy on the details. But the main details are true. It was just a few months after the 9-11 tragedy, and the first time my husband and I had flown since the events of that day. We went to the LA trade show for the industry he works in, so we flew in and out of LAX. Everybody was still nervous about flying, and it seemed the rules about what you could and couldn't take on the plane changed weekly. I think they were saying to allow 2-3 to three hours at the airport before your flight time, to check in and go through security. So of course, there was a long line to check in and a lot of grumbling around us. I remember every two to three minutes, there was an announcement about not leaving your baggage unattended and to notify security if you see unattended baggage. Finally, my husband and I were next in line. And that's when out of nowhere, suddenly, Karen comes pushing her way to the front. The woman literally cuts in front of like 20 people. She was dressed in a hot pink tracksuit with bling on it and matching baseball cap. She had a big pink and black leopard print rolling suitcase, a matching tote bag, and two matching small suitcases. Several people protested, of course, telling her where the back of the line was. And that's when she says, I don't care. My plane leaves in 30 minutes. And that's when I pipe up and say, so are we. We're next in line. And of course, the woman doesn't care. She pushed past me and starts running up to the next window. And they waited on her as several of us yelled our protest. That's when the window next to Karen's opened and we stepped up to it. I noticed Karen put her ticket into her tote bag, not bothering to step aside so the next person could get up and check in. Of course, she was carrying on two small suitcases and her tote bag because she didn't care that you weren't allowed that many carry-ons. I then watched her pick up the two suitcases and run off towards her gate, leaving her tote bag behind. 
That's when I look over at the guys behind me, and they saw the tote as well, and we grinned at each other. That's when one of them steps up to the counter, and he told the rep that there was an unattended bag. She of course leaned over and recognized it as Karen's, and she says, oh, I'm sure that lady will be right back for it. And that's when the guy says, but what if she left it here on purpose? And that's when I chime in and say, aren't we supposed to notify security? That's what the announcement keeps saying. She then waved to a security guard who was at the end of the counter just a few feet away. The security guard took the bag and sped off down the hall to one of those golf cart things. And that's when we knew Karen was screwed. As my husband and I were heading down the hall to go through security, we saw Karen racing back towards the check-in counter. We made our flight, and Karen did not make it, but her giant suitcase did, because I saw it on the luggage turnstile when we arrived home. I have no idea what she had to go through to get her bag back, or to get on another flight, and that's why you shouldn't cut people in line. Talk about a healthy dose of karma for the woman that believed that she was more important than everyone else, guys. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe so you don't miss these crazy, crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'll link it right here, guys. A super duper entitled Karen says that he's allowed to steal and to call the cops. He dares OP to call the cops and it doesn't go well. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.